Okay, so let's dive into this, right? Um, my name is David Burrell. I'm with Future IQ. Um, we're being contracted with the Lorraine County Board of Commissioners to, to facilitate, design and facilitate the strategic planning process. Um, we're actually thrilled to do this, and it's kind of a big deal because the county really hasn't had a strategic plan. So this is the first time there's been a really deliberate um, sort of community-focused outreach and engagement to build a strategic plan. Um, and obviously, a, a, you know, a really good strategic plan lays down a pathway to the future. And obviously, as part of that, we want to be thinking about what's that future direction and what are those big kind of building blocks we want to have in that future. Um, so today's virtual workshop is a chance for you to weigh in on a particular part of the process we're in, which is where we're really at the point of trying to identify what we would call the preferred vision. So what's the vision for the future? Um, I'm going to run through um, a slide deck here and bring you up to speed of where uh, we've got to in this work. Um, and then we're going to ask you to take a survey that will give you a chance to weigh in on this notion of the preferred future. Roughly, it's going to be about a 30 minute sort of presentation here running through the material. Um, and then we're going to let you at the survey um, so we've booked this for an hour, but we, we wanted to do that to ensure that you had time while it's fresh on your minds to take the survey. Um, but the actual Zoom kind of presentation workshop will be about 35 minutes or so. A um, couple of people I want to just call out that have joined us here as well. So Celine from Future IQ is on the on the call. She's been sending you out the material, um, including the, um, the flyer and the scenario matrix. Um, I also see Brittany Lovett from the Community Foundation here. Good morning, Brittany. Uh, the Community Foundation has been a really great partner in helping spread the word on the community engagement. Um, and so we've been able to collaborate and I think reach different corners of the community than perhaps a traditional um, sort of county-driven outreach and engagement process would do. Um, at the moment, we're close to about 2,000 people in terms of uh, points of contact we've had with people in this planning process. So we are making some headway in terms of um, outreach and engagement. So Brittany, to you and the Community Foundation, thank you for your partnership on that. Okay, so let me jump in here. Dave, you're muted. Um, and I think that was must have been Dave Greenspan's voice that I heard, yes. right? Is that right? Yes. So Dave's joined us and he's um, leading this project from the county side and we're obviously working very closely with Dave um, and the Community Foundation, as I mentioned. All right, so let's dive into this, right? So um, uh, project objectives, right? You know, as I mentioned, this is kind of a big deal, right? And, and I think everybody who's involved in this from the county staff, uh, the commissioners, the Community Foundation, ourselves as Future IQ, we recognise that this is a really important uh, opportunity for people in the county to weigh in on. We do have a, a project engagement committee, which is made up of mayors and um, some of the elected officials from across villages and townships and so on. Uh, so a lot of kind of connectivity being brought to the to the party on this one. Um, a really strong feature of this, um, which I have been talking about, is the focus on community engagement. Um, so we've been conducting these think tanks, surveys, these workshops, um, we'll be having more in the new year, of course. Um, and as I said, we're really at the point of trying to get to this understanding of preferred future. And then in the first part of next year, we'll be building out the strategic uh, actions that will get us to the future. Um, in terms of the timeline, you know, we're really right in this phase here, which is about exploring future trends and scenarios, which we'll share with you today. Um, and then we sort of move into the deeper planning in the second half. Um, to date, um, this is just a up, it should be updated actually. We're about almost 1,500 people have taken the first survey. Uh, the think tank, we had um, over 100 people participate in those two days. Um, and we're now almost at 200 people in terms of these um, county wide workshops. So, as I said, we're getting some good um, penetration. Um, in terms of a couple of things that are really interesting, I think, like help frame this. So, just this is a little snippet of results from the, from the community survey. Um, and we will be posting these um, to the project portal. In fact, I think they're up there now, but uh, we'll be sort of sort of letting people know that. We, we asked a number of questions that we were trying to gauge people's sentiment about today and how they view the future and how well the county is positioned for the future. So this is a pivot chart where we've plotted two questions against each other. So one question was around 
on the um, horizontal axis, on the x-axis, was about people's satisfaction with living and working in uh, Lorraine County. And so minus five, very unsatisfied, five, very satisfied. Um, and you can see that most of the results are sort of skewing towards a high level of satisfaction. Um, on the vertical axis, we asked about growth opportunities. So did people see opportunities for their own future development and growth in the county? Um, very little future opportunity at the bottom, fantastic future opportunity at the top. Um, the highlight of this is that there's a really large number of responses in that quadrant where people are feeling somewhat satisfied and feeling pretty good about future opportunities. So that's a great kind of a, a test because it does say that there's this sort of you know sense of you know sort of joy or sort of satisfaction people have. However, I do want to point out that we do have a still have quite a range of responses. Although the majority is obviously in that quadrant, there is a, a range of responses where people are not satisfied and see very little future opportunities. So there's a little bit of a two-speed sort of equation there. I think the strategic plan obviously is going to have to kind of dig in and understand what drives this cohort of people who are feeling various levels of dissatisfaction and various sort of levels of lack of a future opportunity and the plan needs to address that of course um in terms of um just a second here i'm just going to move this all right so that, um this uh data here so that was relatively good although there's a sort of cautionary note this question here was more future looking so there was two questions we asked about um how people feel about the current direction of the county so very concerned at the minus five very satisfied at the plus five uh, we also asked about the ability to adapt and change. Were people concerned or satisfied about the ability to adapt and change in the county? Interestingly, in this one, the majority of responses tend to be sort of more in the neutral to the lower left. So an elevated level of perhaps concern about the current direction and the ability to change. And I think that ties to this kind of recognition that there's a lot of stuff going on in the world, right? Things are starting to move very fast. And the question is, is the county really agile enough and is it kind of geared up to be able to respond and adapt to those changes? Certainly this data suggests from, from nearly 1,500 people that there's a, at least a pretty significant cohort of people say, look, we could do much better, right? And again, that's something the plan needs to address. Um, I wanted to talk a bit about the think tank um, and some of the results from that because that's part of what we're testing with you today. Um, we held the think tank at the end of October, last two days of October. Uh, two-day program. The first day, uh, we explored future trends. We talked a lot about what are the big drivers shaping the future of the county. The second day, we built out a series of scenarios, which are different versions of the future, um, which is some of the materials Celine sent out. Um, and that's a testing ground. So basically, if you're not familiar with scenario planning, a scenario is just a version of something, right? In this case, it's a version of the future. So we built out these four different scenarios of the future, and they're a way to test a, what, what do you think the implications are and what would of those futures would appeal to you. Think of them as like railway tracks into the future. You know, what if we go down this track? What does it look like in 2035 when we get there? What if we go down this railway track? What does that look like in 2035 when we get to that future? So it's a way for us to kind of like build that out and test it. Um, the scenario framework, uh, which I'm just going to hit on very briefly here, um, we did a lot of work with these drivers and we identified two really big themes, which is what we call these future splitting themes. So the big issues are going to go be the ones that really shape what are the outcomes in the future. Uh, we've presented these as two axes, so these big blue arrows in the middle of this diagram. Um, one of these big future splitting themes was around what we call industry and infrastructure development. So think of kind of very much the physical world. So what type of industries do we have? What's our infrastructure look like? What our housing patterns look like? And we played out different sort of directions on that, that axis. The vertical axis is around community direction. So think of that as a lot more about the community fabric, um, the sort of leadership, decision-making, much more the human component um, of the, the county. And we were, again, we were playing at these different possible directions um, and then thinking about how does that shape the, the future. Um, so let me just kind of walk you through this. So the industry development one, and we developed some sort of narrative around each end of those uh, continuums because they're presented as continuums. They're not intended to be 
uh, right or wrong, good or bad. They're just different possible ways that we could head. And we're thinking about, well, what would happen if we did that or we did that? Um, obviously, the endpoints are described. So here on one end, we have traditional industries. So in that, we're sort of saying, well, what if we focused on the traditional industries that the counties sort of had? Um, we understand those, they're familiar. We design our policy and our investment to target towards those familiar traditional industries and sectors. Um, probably each municipality does its own thing, somewhat works on its own priorities. Um, the community infrastructure would be very much the suburban sort of style growth model. So that kind of that kind of creep that spread from the from the east to the west, you know, you get housing developments and it sort of moves out, a lot of single family home type of uh, development, transit really remaining very car oriented um, and skills training, you know, somewhat sort of reacted to the, the industry needs. So the other end, so that's one possible direction, not right or wrong, just a possible way to go on industry and infrastructure development. The other one we called emerging industries. So we said, what if there's much more of a focus on the future oriented industry? So we build on the traditional ones in creative ways, but we also invest and sort of take a little bit of a risk perhaps on some of these emerging sectors, technology, water-based uh, industries, energy-based industries, food and agriculture, lots of evolution occurring in those sectors. Um, you know, really think about a, a county-wide collaborative approach, sort of kind of lifting the heft, you know, being able to think bigger and, and being able to sort of take on bigger, bigger sort of policy and investment initiatives. Um, really thinking about a coordinated approach, uh, higher levels of institutional collaboration and so on that help drive um, critical infrastructure, think of transportation, all those things, right? So we have these kind of big continuums, right? The community fabric, community direction component, the bottom is sort of, think of that as a bit sort of more like a reactive mode um, and the top being more like a proactive mode. So we were playing out here. The bottom is, what if the sort of posture is like a responsive to needs, as we called it? So think of it as market driven so that the government probably somewhat sits back and waits till there's strong market signals and even perhaps significant market pressure and heat, and then it sort of starts to act. So it's sort of somewhat more cautious, um, but it's sort of responding to markets, um, land use policy and so on are driven by these priorities of individual communities. Um, you know, we'd be sort of really perhaps focusing on existing services and, and workplace training, um, communities are service driven, you know, really aiming to support sort of a traditional family structure. So it's sort of responsive to needs, not kind of getting too far ahead um, and so on. The other end, something quite different on a community posture or a community direction. Uh, this was, we call it future ready. Um, this is where there's really an intentional and perhaps significant investment in creating a future ready community. A real focus on you know, youth, workforce, resident education, thinking about equity and adaptability, um, you know, fostering new ideas and creativity, you know, coordinated approaches, really quite a different proactive approach to building a sort of future ready community fabric and leadership. Um, so a very different approach. So that gives us these different ways to play out the future. What that creates is these four big scenario spaces. So each one is a combination, is a future that's framed by the combination of the endpoints of the axis. So this scenario here, which we called scenario A, the team that worked on that called strengthening tradition through innovation. That was a future that was framed by uh, industry development focused on traditional industries um, and a future ready, building a future ready community. So what future does that create? Um, this one here, which was the future ready, coupled with emerging industries, they called that unified Lorraine County, and so on as you go around. So these four different sort of distinctly different versions of the future, which actually in the think tank, the participants deem them to be all plausible, as in you know, it, these could all happen, right? So if you stand here looking to the future, they saw that this was a pretty realistic range of possible uh, futures that could play out. Um, Celine sent you through this matrix here. This gives a little bit more detail about each one of those scenarios. I'm just going to walk through and give you kind of the high level on this, right? Um, but it was a really actually a fascinating exercise to think about these different directions and different implications. So the one here that was scenario A, strengthening tradition through innovation. Um, this was a really fascinating one, right? So the group sort of thought this started off feeling pretty good, right? So 
We're focusing on traditional industries, so we feel there's some familiarity there. There's some comfort with that. We know what we're dealing with. Um, we're investing in this future-ready community fabric. Um, so people thought, oh, we'd probably be feeling pretty excited about things to start with, right? You know, you get this investment occurring in, you know, sort of, you know, different ways, innovation and ideas and people are coming together and, you know, you sort of got this kind of sort of sort of great momentum going, right? Um, however, because we're playing this out over a decade plus, out to 2035, they felt this would start off okay, um, but ultimately, this scenario started to have some challenges and lose a bit of steam as it got further out in the timeline. What drove that was what they saw as a fundamental disconnect between the industry development and the community direction axis. So on one hand, we're focusing on traditional industries. At the other hand, we're focusing on a future-ready community and a future-ready workforce. So they felt that the, the, the sort of the, the challenge in this is we could be producing these uh, sort of residents and students who are well equipped for the future and are really thinking about emerging opportunities, but we haven't developed those in our local economy. So a lot of people would perhaps then have to go leave, go elsewhere to find jobs that match their their skill set and their interests, right? So there was this sort of disconnect, which got more pronounced as we went further into the future. Um, so we start off strengthening tradition through innovation, but what happens is it starts to unravel um, and we get these challenges of this big disconnect as we go down, down the timeline. Um, scenario B, um, you know, different version of the future, future ready, coupled with emerging industry focus. Um, they call, call that future unified Lorraine County. Um, the group that worked on this felt that there was a lot of potential upside um, they saw things emerging in this, such as a stronger environmental focus. So picking up some of those emerging social uh, values, um, you know, perhaps a really good investment in youth and workforce and resident education. There'd be sort of a sense of a, a lifting up of perspective. Um, there'd be perhaps a lot of excitement about new industries and and sort of that kind of buzz of you know, like sort of like Columbus has got the 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 you know the, the semiconductor factory and everybody talks about that you know it's that kind of future that future industry is coming to town and there'd be a fair bit of that going on right um and that, so they did feel that there was a lot of potential upside however the challenge they saw in this scenario is that there's a lot of change right and a lot of investment and that's not always everybody's best friend right and there are hurdles to overcome because you're building collaboration you're perhaps having to find creative ways to resource and to invest in these things this would be a world that would move pretty fast, right? And and that that could challenge sort of traditional and sort of uh, comfortable norms in some cases, right? But overall, they felt it, it could produce some really good outcomes. Um, scenario C here, uh, seeking the sweet spot, um, coupling together emerging industries with this responsive to needs, sort of more the reactive uh, posture at the level of leadership and community fabric. Um, you could put a tagline on this, say, seeking the sweet spot, but never quite finding it. Um, because what they saw in this scenario was that um, there's always this sense we're just a step behind, right? So, and what drives that is that we have, on one hand, a focus on these emerging industries and that sort of investment. But because our public system, you know, sort of government and community fabric is somewhat in a reactive mode, and, and waiting for signals, we're always one step behind, right? So there's this idea that you'd get um, community infrastructure would lag the kind of current needs. We'd probably have lots of young families moving into the, the county, but the services aren't, and amenities aren't there for them. The roads are sort of falling behind. Um, even the workforce and the skills gaps would be pronounced. So you have these new industries seeking these new skills, but we aren't really equipping the workforce fast enough for those so you could get some sort of churn. So companies could come and go because they can't sustain the workforce. But they also saw that there'd be a fair bit of frustration in this, right? Like we're seeking, seeking this sweet spot, not quite finding it, always feeling like we're one step behind. Um, so they felt sort of that there were some pluses for sure in this scenario. You, know, you could have the sort of excitement of these new industries, but we never really quite were able to deliver on the, the promise. Um, scenario D, um, they call this one the way we've always done it. It's the coupling together of traditional industries and the responsive to needs. Um, 
they they felt pretty despondent about this future. To be honest, they they sort of felt um, this was a really a, a sort of a setup for stagnation. There was a real danger that the county could kind of track along sort of okay, but the world would sort of accelerate past, right? And and the, there was a danger in this scenario of the county getting left behind. Um, they did forecast or predict some things like there'd be an ongoing lack of collaboration and a regional approach. Uh, workforce issues would become probably more pronounced across the, the region, um, including unemployment. Uh, poverty uh, would remain the same or increase. People would leave perhaps the county for a better life elsewhere. We'd have some sort of public safety issues that would be somewhat endemic, um, and we wouldn't solve any of the big challenges of housing and, and fragment transportation systems and so on, right? So four very different and big versions of the future, right? Um, they um, And they were all assessed as plausible, as in people could actually see any one of those happening, right? So before I go to the next piece, just I want to just stop here just for a second, see if there's any questions about this. I know Celine sent this sheet out, so you hopefully have had a chance to either review it or have it with you. Um, but I wanted to just kind of map out those scenarios and how we got there. Um, but any questions of clarification or, or um, questions on that? Okay, I don't see any, so that's cool. Um, all right, so... Now let's think about this, right? So so what? We have these four big versions of the future, right? So, well, there's a couple of things, right? So these do present some really interesting choices, right? And what we now want to talk about and what we're going to ask you to do in the survey is to think about these different choices of the future and think about them in a particular way. But, but first of all, we know life's not as simple as four big scenarios, right? Um, so we have in the background here, you'll see there's this 10 by 10 grid um, sort of sort of hitched, hatched into the background. What that gives us is a way to think about this scenario matrix as 100 different possible versions of the future, and they're all subtly different, right? So obviously the corners are more extreme, more amplified versions of the scenario. The edges are you know, the more extreme versions. Um, and so as you move across this scenario matrix, you can think about these kind of subtly different combinations of these different um, big axes. So obviously at this end here, we're ex on the extreme of traditional industries. This end here, we're on the extreme of emerging industries. But if you slide back a little bit, you can go, okay, we're mostly emerging industries here, but we've still got a little bit of a nod to traditionals and so on, right? So you can kind of slide up and down each of these axes and sort of apply that to these hundred different um, cells and think about this in terms of a, a sort of a creative way to think about the future. Now, in the survey, um, which we're going to give you the link for when we kind of break the presentation, um, we've what we've you'll see a diagram that looks like this, right? So what we've done is we've pushed the sort of scenario stuff to the background and brought brought that grid to the foreground. So this then gives us this hundred cell matrix, right? And we go, we're going to ask you to think about and respond in the survey to three things. So what do you think is the least desirable future? So which out of those 100 different cells do you think is the least desirable future for Lorraine County? Um, what do you think is the expected future? So in other words, where do you think you're, you're going to end up by default if we keep going the way we are? Like, so where's, where's the, where do you think you'll land on that sort of matrix in 2035? Um, and then I want you to think about the preferred future. Um, so in other words, which which one of these cells represents the the optimal future from your view in 2035, knowing that the corners are the more extreme versions, you know, either highest levels of change, least levels of change, or different combinations and so on. Um, how we're going to do that in the survey is we're going to ask you to plot coordinates for those three different things. So least desirable future, expected future, preferred future. Um, and you'll see this, we're, and we basically have uh, just created the coordinates by the lower left is one, and then the 10 is the right and the top, right? So you can use this to plot, and obviously the horizontal is the x-axis, the vertical is the y-axis. So for example, if you said um, the preferred future, just for argument's sake, was here in this cell, then you would record that in the survey as four on the x and seven on the y. So just plotting two-dimensional coordinates to give us that 
sort of view of where you think it's expected and preferred. So if you think of that, so you might say, okay, I think the expected's here. In this case, that would be a 4-4 four, four, um, and so on. You can figure that out. Um, in the survey, you'll be presented with questions that look like this. So the least desirable future, the least optimal desired future in 2035, x-axis, y-axis, and that chart is straight above these questions in the survey. So you just record in there a number, one to 10, whole numbers, please. Um, so just one to 10 and plot the X and Y coordinates. So do that for the least desirable, the expected and the preferred. Um, what that gives us is the ability to be able to build up these heat maps. So we'll be able to see where the distribution of views are around um, those three questions and where the point of consensus is, right? It's a really, it's a really, actually a really nice way to, to gather a lot of community input and views um, and be able to really drill into a very precise notion of a preferred future and what that'll tell us wherever that is right that'll tell us what direction we need to head and how big the task is ahead of us because the gap between expected and preferred tells us how far do we need to move right so how much do we need to change our uh, trajectory as we we think about the future um, so it should be pretty easy that the survey is just a handful of questions uh, three of them look like this. We'll also ask you to just to talk a little bit more about your preferred future, um, what why that appeals to you, what you'd like to see in the future. Um, and then obviously we're going to use, we're going to take, this is our last workshop. So we're going to then um, process all this data. You'll be able to look at it online and be able to look at um, how different groups. So we held nine workshops around the county, plus two these two virtual ones, plus the think tank. You'll be able to look at all those data, data sets together or separate them out. So you might want to say, okay, well, what do people down in Wellington think versus what do people in you know, Lorraine think or something like that, right? And we'll see if there's any difference between those different uh, locations that we hold um, um, and to, to get the sense of the preferred future, right? So any questions on that? Um, but And if there's, if there's not, we're going to send you to the survey, right? But I just want to check with you if there's any questions. Uh, first, I see one thing in chat. Let me just have a quick look at that. Um, oh, somebody said, "Yep, it's great work done by many members of the community." Yep, I, and I, I actually agree with that. I think, I think there's the, I think the think tank participants did a, just a great job, really wrestling with the big challenges of the future, um, and thinking that through, and really applied a lot of good intellectual discipline to really building out plausible versions of the future that give everyone a choice and say, "Okay, here's what our choices are." What do you like and why do you like that? So, all right, great. So what we're going to do now, um, so we're going to put the, so in a second, um, Celine's going to put the, the link to the survey in the chat. Um, what you can do is then just go straight to that link, click it, um, and then that'll take you to the survey and you can take the survey. And once you start the survey, you can drop out of this Zoom. We'll just stay on for a minute or so for questions and then we'll just close down the Zoom. Um, like I said, we did book this for an hour, but we wanted to make sure that within that hour, you had time to take the survey, right? Because otherwise, we all know you've got a meeting at the end of the hour and so on, right? So we wanted to include that in the time that was allocated uh, to the to this. Um, you can also download that link and take the survey later if you wish. If you start the survey um, and then drop out of it, you probably won't be able to get back in because we have it set up that you can only take it once from each device. Um, just to protect the integrity of the data. Um, so you could just um, uh, perhaps download that link and then uh, do the survey later. But we would strongly, strongly encourage you to take it straight away. Our experience is the, the, the further in time we get from this moment, the, the likelihood of you taking the survey will drop off, right? <laughs> so there's a chance to kind of do it right now while it's fresh on your mind. You know, you've got the information in terms of these scenarios. You understand, I think, the hopefully the expected and preferred and least desirable sort of notions and how to plot those in the survey. Um, so with that, we just want to really appreciate your input. Um, and Celine, are you able to put that link in the chat? Okay, great. Um, okay, Celine's just put it in the chat. Um, so you can see the link there. So... Just click on that. It'll take you to the survey. We'll stay here for just a minute if there's any questions. Um, but feel free, once you open the survey, you can drop off the Zoom. Um, then you won't have to listen to me rabbit on while you take the survey. That'll make it a bit easier for you. Um, so so really, thank you for jumping on, right? And um, we just look forward to your input into this really important 
point in the process, right? And obviously it's going to give us that shared vision and then we can start to figure out what our roadmap looks like. So thank you.